Hello everyone and welcome to the Tuesday video. I hope that your week is starting well and you're having a fantastic Tuesday. So as you can see by the title, the thumbnail, we have a Bolo brand video today. This is something that our channel was very, very familiar with back in the day. We would do Bolo videos, top 10s or 10 Bolo lists all the time. And I say this like it was a long time ago, but it wasn't that long ago. It was probably less than a year ago that we did our last one. They started to kind of reach a point of burnout. I feel like we would do them all the time. They're not the most entertaining, at least for me. I don't know. Maybe there are some of you guys that did really like them, but for Ryan and for I, they just got a little like long and there actually is a lot of work that goes into doing them. Doing them so frequently was tiring and was creating a lot of like YouTube burnout feelings for us. So we haven't done them in a hot minute, but today we're gonna do one again and it's gonna be sort of a different twist on bolos. I will actually be having more bolos for you guys today than usual. As I said, we used to do 10 every time and I actually have 15 for you guys today. And we're gonna kind of talk about some different information. We're gonna go quicker with these. We're not gonna dive into the founders and their life history and all that. I do personally find that stuff super, super interesting, especially with these brands that I'm so familiar with selling and with picking up and with possibly owning myself, but it just adds a lot of kind of unnecessary info when you guys are probably just looking for things that are worth money and worth selling. We've taken out some of the info from past bolos and we've added in some new kind of like categories or info for these new bolos. Bolos. Today's video is a men's bolo list. Now we have done men's bolos in the past, but I think we've only done it once or twice before. I tried my best to not include brands from those past lists. So if you'd like to go learn some more, what was that accent? Learn some more. Learn some more men's bolos. Those are in the bolo playlist that we have. And I will also link the past men's bolos below. Real quick now, before we jump into it, if you are new here or if you have no idea what I'm talking about, what bolo stands for is be on the lookout. This is not a strictly reseller term, but when it comes to the reselling community, a bolo brand is a brand that is worth picking up, it has value, it sells well. Bolos are brands that you should be looking for when you're out shopping. And last couple things before we jump into it. Yes, I know I'm in a different setting. That is because <laughs> a, I'm on a comfortable couch, so this is kind of nice. The lighting's a little different too. But B, Ryan may or may not have two or three Ikea bags worth of stuff filling <laughs> our filming room and Poshmark room. Like it is everywhere, everywhere. There's not even a square inch for me to sit. <laughs> I didn't really want to like move all his stuff around. So this is the new setting. And Valentine's be on, <laughs> Bolo, be on the lookout for some more Bolos. Tomorrow there will be more men's Bolo brands for the Valentine's posted to the channel. Alrighty, so we're gonna go through the info on these brands. Now I'm gonna talk about the brands. I'm gonna give a very brief explanation of the brands and maybe some historical facts or like the year they're from. Very brief. We're gonna go over the types of pieces that they make and the best ones to look for or the possibly most common ones that you will find out in the wild. And then some of the ones that are maybe worth skipping. So we're gonna decipher like what pieces from these brands are bolos and there might even be some pieces from these brands that are not. Then we're gonna cover the eBay versus Poshmark, like where to sell it. Where does it do best? Where are the comps the best? Where is the market for it? We're gonna talk about that. And then we're gonna go over a range of comps. Another little change we're gonna have is when I'm talking about these brands, I'm going to show the logo here, which is why I'm kind of slowly moving over to the side. I'm going to show the logo here. I'm going to show a real life clothing label. And then I'm going to show you one piece of clothing. And I'm only sticking to one because if I do a bunch, this video is going to take forever to make. Now that I've rambled forever, let's jump into it. The first brand that we have today is called Taylor Stitch. Now I have recently found Taylor Stitch for the first time and that is how I learned about it. I actually found it again recently. It's one that just entered my my psyche and my my Rolodex of Bolo brands. Taylor Stitch is a strictly men's Bolo brand. So this brand only makes men's. They are very focused on being renewable and recyclable, which is really great. A lot of companies nowadays do focus on that quite heavily. They spent 10 years researching and getting feedback on the pieces of clothing they were making to make sure they were making the best quality, most kind of like sought after and market friendly pieces that they could create. Now, they are really known for making their button up shirts. If you are to find a tailor stitch piece, I would say that you're probably most likely to find the button up shirts and that can 
can be more of like a flannel or it can be more of like a dress shirt type shirt, but that is what they're most known for. Though they do make shackets, they do make more like normal flannel shirts. They do make t-shirts. They make pants. They really do make everything. But the things that you're going to find the most value in are the shackets, are the jackets, are the flannels, and the button shirts. Now, when it comes to Taylor Stitch, I would say that you would have the best luck on eBay with selling it. You definitely can find luck on Poshmark with it too, but I think eBay is definitely the better place to have it. So if you do not cross post everything, focus on getting your Taylor Stitch pieces on to eBay. Ebay. Now the comp range for these, and I'm talking sold comps. So we're going to talk about three comps with each brand. And the bottom is going to be, these are all kind of averages, but we're going to have like an average low, an average middle, and an average high. So I did see multiple pieces selling at each of these price ranges, but all three price ranges exist. So at the lower end, things were selling for $30. That's probably more of the thinner button shirts. That's more of like the t-shirt type pieces and what have you. The middle range, which is the most common sales price was closer to $50 and like give or take five bucks on each side. So I'd say that's really good. 50 bucks selling like a button up shirt or like a flannel. They also went all the way up to like $100. So I saw pieces from Taylor Stitch, probably maybe like the more new tags, the more modern, like maybe they're still sold in the store pieces. We're going for like $100. With some of these ranges of comps, they can extend past and of course go below. I'm talking more average. So of course there's people that undersell their stuff there. You could find some Taylor Stitch stuff sold for probably like 18, 20, 25. And you could also find some sold for like 125, 150. And that's Taylor Stitch. All right, are we all in the are we all in the groove? Are we all in the in the mode? That's how we're gonna be doing these. So next up we have A P C A period P period C period. This brand is from 1987. What A P C stands for is something in French <laughs> that I didn't want to butcher, so I didn't write it down. But it translates to Production and Creation Workshop. They make men's and women's, but of course we're talking about men's here. They also make blankets. That's the only other thing they make is like quilted blankets, which I thought was really interesting. With A P C you are most likely to find shirts, again, kind of like a button up shirt type situation, thermals. So think of like waffles, sweaters or sweatshirts and jackets or coats, but kind of like work coats, car coats, that type of stuff. APC has done a number of collaborations with brands. I think <laughs> it's actually National Pokemon Day today. <laughs> and I think APC has actually had a Pokemon collaboration. So <laughs> woo, good for them. <laughs> so if you have APC Pokemon, maybe it'll sell today. But for for APC, I would say that you would see equal amount of luck selling it on eBay as Poshmark. So honestly, list it in both places or don't really favor one over the other. You're probably pretty safe on both with frequency and with pricing. The comps range once again from like a $30 average on the lower side with the not as substantial pieces, $40 in the middle and $60 for a high. So it's not as much value as Taylor Stitch, but it definitely still has some value and is totally worth picking up. Now we're gonna move on to another brand. <laughs> and that brand is Kuiu, and that is spelled K-U-I-U. So Kuiu is mainly known for being a hunting brand. They make a lot of hunting wear, but they make mainly just like outdoorsy wear in general. So stuff for hiking, stuff for camping, stuff for an outdoorsman, that type of stuff. It's a very utilitarian brand. It's not super like style heavy. It's not something you really wear. It's not like a streetwear look. They don't make pieces that are kind of like ready to wear. It's very utilitarian and you use it when you are up on a mountain or you are hunting, I guess. This brand, their goal is to be innovative and to solve problems that like arise with people that do these outdoor things. Like maybe there's certain parts of the body that get super cold or certain pockets that people need. I I guess is what they're trying to do. They also do luckily do some conservation efforts and they work with conservation companies. They also partner with veteran organizations and first responder funds. So that's really great. They're known for making jackets like puffers and again, like workman's jackets and outdoorsman jackets, fisherman jackets, that type of stuff. Cargo pants. Again, you need the pockets when you're outside. You got to store your cans of beans that you're gonna make on your like campsite fire? I don't really know. This is not a brand that applies to my lifestyle too much. And then they also make bibs. So think like 
outdoorsman overalls, basically, like fisherman bibs and that type of stuff. This brand, once again, I would say you would see just as much luck on eBay as Poshmark. The comps on this brand, it's a little trickier because like there's kind of a variety of types of stuff, but it goes from about $30, once again, at a lower range. $60 is more the mid range for this brand. And then that goes all the way up to like $200. So if you find something more substantial, if you find a puffer, if you find some bibs, those those are going for closer to a average of $200. Now, this is a brand that I will say definitely extends past its average range that I'm talking here. So you can see higher than two to $100 sales. Like if you have a new tags down puffer, you're gonna get more than $200 for it. Up next, number four, this is a brand that I've had quite a few times and I love to sell this brand, and that is Barbour. Now, Barbour is definitely not a strictly men's bolo brand. They also do make women's. They are from way back in 1894. They have quite a name behind them, and they have been around for a long time. They are from England, and they really embrace all of their English stuff. There are English flags all over stuff. Sometimes they have patchwork pieces that have very, like, English things that I don't really understand. So they started in England and then they started by expanding, of course, to other European countries. And that's really where they boomed and they really took off. The Europeans were eaten up the bar for. But of course, nowadays they're everywhere. They're in the US and stuff like that. One thing that got Barbour into the public eye is they were worn by a lot of royals. Royals would wear them on their like walk through the like foggy, rainy, like English streets. And people would be like, what are you wearing? What is that wax jacket? What is that quilt jacket? And it's Barbour. So then Barbour's name really kind of took off. They're really known, as I just kind of hinted at, for their wax jackets, which is kind of like a coated cotton canvas situation and they're also really known for their quilt jackets they're in very kind of like muted like natural colors a lot of stuff is tan or khaki they've got a lot of like pea green and that type of stuff now this is another brand that I would once again say does just as good on eBay as it does on posh of course you have the benefit on eBay of selling internationally so people from Europe where it is still a huge name can buy it from you there but Barbour has done really really well for me on posh Posh as well, so you're totally safe there too. Barbour, I was mainly looking at these wax jackets and quilt jackets, so that is where the comp range comes from. The comp range is about $60 average at the lower end. $90 is kind of that sweet spot. There's a lot sold for $90. And again, we go all the way up to $200. So Barbour has some like really long like trench kind of quilt coats and stuff like that that go for a lot. They also have recently done a collaboration with Anna Sui and that stuff goes for buco, buku, bo buco, boco bucks. A lot of money is what I'm trying to say. That stuff is really good. And I've seen a couple at like an arbitrage situation that I've been wanting to pick up of the Anna Sui collaborations, but it's just been like a little out of my price range. I think I found one for like 115 and they do go for like 300, 350, I believe, but I just didn't want to take the risk. Barbour is worth a lot of money. It's been around forever. I would guarantee you at some point in your reselling career, you will totally find Barbour. I have quite a few times, even recently, I have found it like two or three times. The next brand, and I should have looked up the pronunciation of it, is Isaya or Isaya. I think it's Isaya, but Isaya, <laughs> I, I say, I think it's Isaya, and then I continue to say Isaiah. Isaiah is an Italian brand from the 1920s. I'm honestly surprised that this brand's not even older than that, but it is an old brand. They started off by just making fabrics, like really high-end wools and fabrics for other brands, and then they moved on to making their own clothing. Now, this is a brand that's very heavily leaning into the whole like suiting and tailored pieces type situation. They're known for their suits, they're known for their dress shirts, they're known for all that kind of like high-end dress type pieces. Their logo is a little like stick of coral. There's some kind of like really, really long history of what that means. And this is the type of stuff I'm not gonna go into this time because it doesn't really matter, but it has something to do with Medusa. I know that. I don't know what coral has to do with Medusa, but okay. So if you're gonna find Isaiah, it's probably gonna be a blazer or a dress shirt or possibly even a tie or like dress pants. That's most likely what you'll find. That's what I have found in the past. But what you're gonna really want to find is the blazers, a suit 
set, a jacket of some kind, or some kind of coat. That is the stuff that totally brings in the most money. That is the best stuff to find. Now with this brand, I have a little warning, like a little no-low trigger. Some of these brands I'm gonna have small little like no-low triggers of like, definitely don't pay up for these pieces from this brand. And for Isaiah, it is the dress shirts and the ties. Those do not have much value, unfortunately. In the bins, pick it up because like, of course. Don't pay up for an Isaiah dress shirt or tie. Those just, the, the sell through and the selling price on those is not nearly as good as the other stuff. So just maybe don't. For this brand, we're kind of changing this section up too. For the places to sell it, I would actually tell you to send in Isaiah to the real real. The real real prices Isaiah really well, especially if you have these good pieces like a blazer, like a suit, like a jacket, like a coat. They mark this brand very, very high. It is very valuable on there. If not, if you do want to sell it yourself, then I would probably sell it on eBay. eBay is definitely better for sell-through rate as per my like research. And then last, maybe Poshmark. I feel like this is going to apply to a lot of the more dressier type brands posh isn't really always the place for the like dressier suits and stuff like that especially men's that applies for Isaiah. Number six we got Stone Island. Now this one a lot of you probably do know and a lot of you probably think it's a new brand because I did. I thought that this brand was from maybe like 2010 or 2008 maybe. It just doesn't seem like it's been around that long and I've only heard about it in the last maybe like five years but Stone Island is from 1980. 82 in Italy. That is when it originated and launched. In 1990 is when it really got popular though. So it did take a little bit to like find its footing. And it first got really popular in Europe and Japan. There's quite a few like 90s pieces out there. I think you're kind of just as likely to find like older Stone Island, like from the 90s as you are to find newer pieces. I just in the past like two months found one of each. I found a 90s piece and I found a modern piece. So yeah, in 2020, fun fact, Montclair bought Stone Island, which I think was a good move on their part. And maybe that is why suddenly it seems to be so popular and trendy with kind of like the Gorp core streetwear people is because Montclair has like boosted it, but I don't really know. I don't know if those are related, but I thought it was interesting that Montclair owns it now. They are worn a lot by like hip hop singers and artists and by a lot of sports players. That's kind of how they are getting a lot of recognition and a lot of public eye from different Day to day kind of everyday people. Stone Island is a men's strictly brand, though they do make a couple like youth pieces. And I guess I didn't look far enough to see if that's like just boys versus girls, but I know that they make some youth items. Now for Stone Island, what you're really gonna wanna find is jackets, coats, sweatshirts, or sweatpants. So I think that kind of like lends itself to the whole more streetwear kind of aesthetic and gorp core is people looking for the jackets, the coats and sweat sets. Though they do make other things like button ups and t-shirts and sweaters and stuff like that. For Stone Island, I would say you're just as safe listing your Stone Island on eBay as Poshmark. Now the comp range for them, an average on the lower end is about $60. And I was kind of looking at the four categories I just talked about, the jackets, coats, sweatshirts, and sweatpants. The mid range is about a hundred. So that's kind of the golden areas getting a hundred for that stuff. And then the high range which is more the coats and jackets is around like 300 so stone island is very very popular it has a lot of value and a lot of like market base my brother actually has a friend he works in like construction he's not like i mean i don't know what he does in his like spare time maybe he is into fashion but from the outside view he's not like a fashion mogul or whatever but he one time when he found out what ryan and i did was like oh my gosh if you ever find something from stone island like get it for me i want to buy it from you so stone island has kind of a grip on average male people <laughs> I don't really know what I'm saying, but if, if you get what I'm saying, alrighty, let's move on to number seven. We're about halfway done with these bolos. So Jack Spade is the next one. And that is a brand that started in 1996. And they started by their whole, their whole thing, their whole signature is like waxed canvas. So think kind of the barbore coat. That's what Jack Spade does, but it's bags. Their whole thing is durability, which makes sense with wax covered cotton that is very durable. And it was actually started 
by Kate Spade and her husband, Andy Spade, which I had no clue. I, for some reason, always thought there was no connection, but there's an absolute connection because Kate Spade was a founder of it. 1999 was when their first store opened up. And one thing to take note of with this brand is it is nothing like Kate Spade. There are not crazy colors. It is not whimsical, kitschy, or vibrant. It is very, very minimal and muted for sure. The best things to find from Jack Spade would be briefcases, backpacks, and messenger bags, kind of like the bigger, more useful bags. They do make some clothing, like some pants, polos, shirts, new. I honestly don't even think I would pick that stuff up at the bins. The clothing is a no-go. That is a total no low. Don't, <laughs> just don't. The comps were shockingly bad on the clothing. Jack Spade would do just as good on eBay as it would Poshmark. The lower end for sale price is an average of about $35. And I'm looking at mainly the bags. I'm not looking at the clothing. Mid range, about 55 bucks, like listed at 65. Take as low as 50. That's a good range in the middle, but you can get up to like $150. And that's for more like substantial pieces, probably like like a genuine, like maybe a duffel, a large messenger briefcase, something in really good condition that you can look for quite a lot more from. So if you find this at the bins or for pretty cheap, Jack Spade is definitely worth picking up. And I am Jack and I have a spade tattoo and I promise it's not named after me, but very fitting. Next up, we're kind of talking another more dressy and formal brand, and that is Brioni, B-R-I-O-N-I. -I. Brioni started in 1945 in Rome. And get this, this this shook me to my core. I was rattled, rolled, shaketh, and shooketh. They were the first brand to have a men's runway. Like that had never been done before. And Brioni was like, men can have a runway too. And they did one and it was the first one. And I think that's iconic. Respect for Brioni, plus 10. Like, I love that. So they're definitely known for their suits, their coats, their tailored pieces. Think more the Isaiah type situation. It's very professional wear. If you find pieces by Brioni, what you would like to find and what you will find value in is the suits, the blazers, and the jackets. A lot like Isaiah. What you don't really want to pick up from Brioni is the shirts, like a button-up shirt, a dress shirt or pants that are all on their own. Now pick up the pants if you find the suit with it. Don't just pick up the pants. The value is not there in the pants. Rioni is definitely gonna do better on eBay than Posh. I found some quite good comps on eBay and Posh, not as much and especially not as frequently. Don't send this brand into the real real. That's where we differ from Isaiah is Brioni is not valued as much on the real real. They do not market very well. They do take it. So if you find something in the bins and you just want to get rid of it, go ahead. But the they do not market well. So don't send it in unless you want pocket change. I looked at comps on eBay for this brand and for the suits and blazers and stuff, I saw a lower range of $80, which I think is great. Like suits and blazers are often not marked super high at Goodwills and they're in the bins a lot. So 80 bucks at the lower end, I think is really good. A hundred is more the mid range for a blazer. And then 150 is the higher range. Of course, some people with like new tag ones or something or like right off the runway ones sold them for even more. But I thought that that was a pretty good range. And I was kind of surprised. I didn't think it'd have that much value. Put your Brioni on eBay if you find it, but if you cross post everywhere, just put it everywhere. Next up is a brand that I love to sell. This is probably my most frequent sold men's brand and probably one of my favorites, a top five favorite. And that is Carbon to Cobalt, which for some reason Poshmark still doesn't have as a brand you can pick from in their system. I don't know why. Carbon to Cobalt does actually make men's and women's. Odds are you'll find a men's piece because they definitely make mostly men's and I think mainly men shop from them. I have I think found one women's piece ever but I found like 10 men's. Their whole inspiration is carbon and cobalt. The carbon is polished and shiny and like spick and span and perfection and the cobalt is like rough and grungy and whatever so that's like their inspiration is being like polish, but also being like the everyday working man or whatever. They are making their clothes to last, but also be comfortable. So it's 
quality, but it's not like you're gonna feel like stiff as a board when wearing it. Now, when you find carbon to cobalt, you're probably gonna find a flannel. That's mainly what I've found. I would say of the 10 carbon to cobalt pieces that I've found, eight have been flannels. So you're definitely gonna find it the most, though you will also once again find like thermals, like a waffle knit thermal or sweaters. I found a number of sweaters from them as well. Carbon to cobalt definitely does just as good on eBay and Posh, and it does really good on both. I've sold it on both. I've sold more on Posh, but that is probably because I list on Posh first and then I cross post to eBay. So sometimes it sells before I can even move it over. The range for comps on Carbon to Cobalt is about $25 on the low end. And that's probably people that mark it lower. Cause I assume if you list it for 25, it's gonna sell quick because the mid range is about $35. And I would say eight out of 10 of my Carbon to Cobalts have sold for $35 plus. 25 is a sold average on the lower end, but try to get a little more than that. And then 45 bucks is kind of a higher end. You're really safe with 35 to $40 for carbon to cobalt. Like that is such a golden window. It doesn't stray much either way, but you can try. I would just say definitely start like around 40 bucks. I think I list mine all at like $40. Next up. Number 10 is a brand called Stio, S-T-I-O. And this brand is a lot newer than I assumed it would be. This brand launched in 2012. They are made from mountains and hiking and they're inspired by all that stuff. It's not as intense as Kuyu at all. This is kind of more of a like smart wool meets Patagonia brand. But their whole thing is that you can look cool while you're out like hiking and camping and stuff. So they do kind of care about style. They are sustainable and they give back to a lot of local communities and they do a lot of like environmental work and donation to environmental situations. They make a lot of shirts, pants, jackets, shorts, puffers, anything Patagonia makes, like a like a knit kind of snap situation. They make that stuff. Their brand, if you're a fan of beer, it looks like a hop. And if you're not a beer person, it looks like a flower bud. <laughs> so there's that. Steo, I've had a couple times, and it is another one like Carbon to Cobalt where it does good anywhere that I put it. So it does good on eBay, but it also does really good on Posh. Put it both places and it will do well. The range for comps on this brand are about $30 at the lower average, 45 dollars at the mid average and then more up to like ninety dollars this is a quite expensive brand and it keeps some good value as a lot of these similar type of brands do so that's great Alrighty, the last five that we have next up we have dale of norway now dale of norway makes men's and women's they were founded in 1879 in Drum roll, please. Norway. Oh my gosh, what? What? Yeah, I can't believe it. They, once again, like a lot of these brands, make clothing that is built to last, mainly sweaters that are built to last, and they want their clothing to be handed down from generation to generation. Now, Dale of Norway, since it's been around since 1879, has a lot of vintage pieces out there, but they do have some modern pieces out there that you will find out in the wild. It all looks identical. It basically feels identical. There's hardly a difference between the vintage and the modern pieces. They mainly make sweaters, and they are the Norwegian, like, printed pattern fair isle type of sweaters the stuff that ryan's been selling a lot of in the past three weeks on what's old saturday but they also do make some knit accessories think gloves think hats think headbands that type of stuff so for their sweaters dale of norway does evenly as good on ebay and posh i would probably put it out on both and it's gonna sell somewhere quickly i've sold it on both and I've had it do really well on both. The lower end of the comps for Dale of Norway, and I'm looking at sweaters specifically, is $40. Older ones a lot of times have like holes or snags or stuff like that. And I'm assuming that's where that lower price comes from because the mid range is $90 and that is closer to where I would expect them to sell. I would look for a $70 to $100 price range if I found a Dale of Norway, but I saw multiple sold comps at like $200. So the higher end of the range is $200. People love these things and they've really built their name and they do really well. Definitely pick up Dale of Norway. Up next, number 12, we have Vitaliano Pancaldi and I love selling this brand. So this brand is from 1947 and it started in Italy and then it moved on to Europe and then it moved on to the USA and it found success in all of those places. Neiman Marcus really helped it expand 
in Europe and then expand to the US. They had it a lot, they sold it a lot, and they built up its name for it. They helped it out quite a lot. They are known for making shirts, ties, scarves, and for some reason, the only other category they make besides those three is swim. Don't know why, didn't have an explanation. Doesn't really matter, but I thought that was weird. Everything they make, at least most of it, like 90%, is so colorful. Think of Emilio Pucci, but like not pastel colors. It's like if Emilio Pucci used very saturated, vibrant, like deep colors versus the pastels. It is patterned, it is colorful, it is crazy. It's very Missoni, very that type of stuff. Now, if you find Vitaliano Pincaldi, you're probably gonna find a dress shirt or a tie. His ties are so, it seems to be iconic. Of anything, I have found of his, it's always been a tie. And I found quite a lot of them. I've had at least like 10 Vitaliano Pentaldi ties. And they do so good. I love when I find one of his ties. They are so popular. They do slightly better on eBay. They sell slightly easier and they sell slightly more. Nothing to write home about. Not like way better or anything because I have sold a lot of them on Poshmark as well and they get a lot of likes there too. So listed on both, it's almost even but you definitely will see just a smidge more traction on eBay with his ties. Now I looked at ties for the comps here. The lower end, just remember these are ties, is about 25 bucks. I think my theory there is people think, oh, it's just a tie. I'm not gonna mark it very high. And so they get about 25 bucks. They list it for 35, they get a $25 offer and they're like, eh, it was like $2 or it was like a nickel at the bins, like whatever. Mid-range, $45. Now we're talking. For me, that is more the lower end of how I sell his stuff is $45. And the higher end, again, we're talking ties, $85 for a tie. If you find that at the bins that cost you a quarter 85 bucks and they do well like they don't take that long to sell i love that brand i wish i could find more of his ties it's so good i love italiano pincaldi number 13 this is a new one to me i just recently found out about it and it's a little a little more rare maybe than some of these other ones but that is portuguese flannel portuguese flannel was started in the 1930s in Portugal, yes. <laughs> so this brand has been owned by the same family for four generations. In each of their like releases and their lookbooks and their runways and collections, they have very limited pieces. They don't do a bunch of variety and stuff. They wanna keep it very like small name, small luxury. We don't wanna oversaturate the market. We don't want to be fast fashion, that type of stuff. So small releases. They focus a lot on sustainability, i.e the limited releases. They use top-notch cotton. They use, they pride themselves in their cotton. It's very expensive, it's very nice. What you're probably gonna find from them is a shirt, like a button. -up. Not necessarily a flannel. Like the thing I found from them is like a satin. It's a button-up satin shirt. You'd think by the name that all you'll find is flannel, but that's not really the case. But it's a lot of button-up shirts, but they also do make like jackets, coats, shorts, and pants, and all of it does well and has value. You're gonna find an even performance on eBay and Poshmark from this brand. They sell for about $25. At the lower end of the comps, $40 as a more golden middle average, and then $60 on the higher end. So I think that's pretty good for like a button-up shirt. That's mainly what I was looking at here was the button up shirts. That's quite good. Probably not going to pay too much to get that. I think that's great. Next up, number 14 is Canali. C-A-N-A-L-I. Once again, we're talking kind of a dressier, more like a businessy brand. So Canali started in 1934 in Italy. Once again, another brand that's been passed down through generations, the Canali family. How Canali got popular over in the U.S., because of course, once again, we started in Italy, we started in Europe, was a New York Yankees player. I didn't write down the name, but he was like, hey, everyone in the US, I love Canali. And the Americans were like, what's Canali? I want some. And then Canali came here and it was popular. They focus on professional tailored pieces, kind of like Isaiah, kind of like Brioni. You're gonna find probably blazers, jackets, or sweaters from this brand, or button-up shirts, pants, or ties. I caution you, I wouldn't no-lo these, but I caution you with the button-up shirts, the solo pants, and the ties. There's definitely not as much value there. I would pay a little bit for them, 
but I would not pay too much. It does not sell for as much as the blazers, jackets, and sweaters. So the sweaters, even if they're thinner, they usually do quite good because they use merino wool, they use cashmere, that type of stuff. You're gonna find a much better performance on eBay from this brand than Posh. I, if anything, would only post it on eBay, but of course, like, feel free to cross post if you want to. There is a much higher sell through rate. The frequency of sales of Canali on eBay was shockingly impressive. When I was doing my research, the day that I was looking, there were like 30 sold by the brand in that day, which I thought was crazy. Otherwise, for pricing, it's pretty similar. So frequency is a lot higher on eBay, but the sales price is very similar on Posh and on eBay. So we're looking for averages of around $40 at the lower end for sales of those better categories of pieces, $90 in the middle and $200 at the higher end. And that's probably better on eBay. 200 bucks, that's pretty good. All right, last brand for the day. This is taking longer than I thought. So the last brand for today is called Telesun. T-A-T-E-L-L-A-S-O-N. And this brand started in 2008, so it's a little bit newer. They started with salvaging denim. So this is all like unused scraps of denim, reused scraps of denim, that type of stuff. They use Japanese denim mainly. I think now they only use Japanese denim, but they started by like focusing mostly on Japanese denim. They pay very close attention to details, the lining of the pockets, the stitching, all the cuts, the dyes that they use, they pay really close attention to. They have like these really specific blends of dyes that they use. If you can't tell, they mainly make jeans, jean jackets, and then they make some shorts as well. The shorts do not do as good as the jeans and jean jackets, but they do still sell and they sell for like okay prices. You're going to find an equal performance for eBay and Poshmark for this brand. The lower end, and I'm mainly looking at the jeans here for the sales, is about $35 at average. 55 is more of like your golden middle area. And then $100 is kind of the higher end that there definitely are sales at that price comp. Wise, look at that. We made it through the return of the Bolo brands. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? So I actually have some extra men's bolo brands, not only for the Valentine's, but I have some extra ones in general. So if you guys would be interested in seeing more men's bolos coming up, I researched like way too many men's brands and I have at least 10 more that I'm not even using in today or tomorrow's video. So if you want to see more men's bolos, and I mean, I'm not talking like, like tomorrow, like maybe next month in two months, let me know. Cause I got some other really, really good ones and yeah. That is all I have for you guys today. Let me know if you've had some some luck or some history with some of these brands. Where do they sell for you? Was I wrong about any of these? Have you had different experiences that I'm talking about? Let me know in the comments. And I will see you guys on Thursday for a bins haul. I'm quite excited. I've went to the bins once so far this week and it was pretty good, but I'm gonna go again and hopefully it's even better. So I will see you on Thursday. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.